Okay, so I was driving over from Hickory yesterday and I was just thinking what a gorgeous day it was. So I had the windows down and the top, the sunroof open, and I was listening to the basketball game, which I never get to do anymore. And um, the North Car I think North Carolina and Florida State were playing. I have a six-year-old, so he's usually hanging on me. So it was just so nice to have the windows open. And I got a call um, from a friend of mine and was talking to him. And I said, yeah, I'm heading out 40 to go to uh, Chattanooga for the show. And he said, well, did they open up I-40 from the rock slides? I was like, oh, crap. So I had no idea if I was going to be having to go all the way back and get on 26 or not. But luckily, it was open, and uh, I made it here. But man, it was just such a gorgeous day yesterday. I just loved being outside. So um, excuse me? Well, you know what? I, I'm a little ashamed to admit it, but I'm a Virginia Tech fan. And uh, they had a very sorry ACC season. So, uh, But it was a good competitive game, and I enjoyed listening to it. So I'm going to talk about the where, why, and how of fiber to the home. It was interesting listening to some of the talks this morning. A lot of the material that I'm going to cover actually was covered sort of in some of the morning sessions. And so um, I think a lot of the, the rationale and, and the understanding of why to deploy fiber to the home um, is really resonating with this crowd. And I think our big challenge is educating the consumers and the public and the elected officials about the importance of fiber to the home and getting that message out. So Catherine asked me to talk a little bit about where does the US stand with respect to the rest of the world in fiber to the home. And these numbers were released just last month at the Fiber to the Home Council show in Europe in Munich. And um, this is sort of a continental look. Uh, you know, 9.7 million homes are connected with fiber in North America. I would say the lion's share of those are in the US. Um, it's uh, actually driven by one of the largest um, telcos here in the US. Uh, Verizon has a big rollout going, and that's where a lot of those numbers come from. But besides that, if you look around the country, there are tons of municipalities um, and uh, smaller independent telephone companies doing fiber to the home, which uh, all rolls into that 9.7. Obviously, Asia is one of the largest uh, deployers. They started the earliest. They've been going for about 10 years now on fiber to the home. Uh, places like Taiwan and Japan and South Korea are just way ahead of where the US are as far as penetration of fiber to the home. Now, these numbers are a little deceiving. I don't even like to use the total aggregate numbers, actually, when I look at it, because a lot of it has to do with population, right? So a better view, and I have some numbers here, is really the penetration as a percentage of the country. If you look at the US, this is from the RVA, the most recent RVA study. Um, you can see that the US is approaching, or actually over 20 million homes passed in fiber to the home now. And a, over a third of those are now connected. So we just saw in the previous slide, it was, it was actually about nine and a half million Homes connected now, so it's pushing up close to that 10 million mark, which is really, really pretty good um, considering we started in earnest kind of late, uh, more in the 2000 2008 time frame. Here was an interesting slide and in information that came out of RVA as well, and I found it uh, really interesting. If you look at, the, so RBOC is the term, let me back up. When we look at metrics and we're measuring these, we talk about two metrics most commonly. Once homes passed, right, and basically that just means that you have, uh, running down the street in a neighborhood, you have a terminated fiber available for service. So it doesn't mean that you have a, a cable with 288 fibers just running down a development that if somebody signed up, you could go in there and pull out fibers and do what you need to do. It needs to be a terminated fiber to be considered a home passed. The second metric is homes connected. And uh, again, that simply means that you have a fiber drop from that termination point to the home, usually terminated in ONT or an ONU, some people call it. But those are the two terms that we typically will use. And if you look at the data, the R box are basically now, there were, went from Ma Bell to seven different split companies back in the 80s, 
and now they're really back to just two again. Um, you could see what their kind of take rate is. The homes connected percentages are pushing above 30, but if you look outside the RBOX, um, and that again is the independent telephone companies and the municipalities, municipal utilities, that take rate is a lot higher. And my, I theorize that it's because as you get to organizations that are smaller and more close to the, to the constituents and more close to the home, that it resonates better with them and they, they trust those folks. And so um, I don't know why uh, for sure, but I theorize that it has to do with the ability to connect with the people that are taking the service. Now this is a very tough slide to see and I apologize for that. But this is the US here. If you look at the actual homes connected penetration. And so somewhere around the 8% um, level and the US is 13th right now um, and sliding a little bit um, from this perspective on penetration. And you can see, again, a lot of the Asian countries um, are really uh, at the top there. UAE, uh, Norway, and a lot of these countries have national broadband plans as well. Th I think that's a big thing is they put in place national broadband plans where they made a concerted initiative to deploy fiber to the home in their country. And now we have a national broadband plan and it hasn't really laid out yet. We also now have a vision. The FCC chairman, Jenikowski, is aiming at 100 million homes for 100 megabit service by 2020. So, but this all just came about in the last, what, two years and these other countries have been doing this for close to 10. Here's another graph. Um, again, you can't see all these names, but I'm not sure that's important. Just look how far down the US is. And Bing, we're right there, 30th. And this is average broadband download, download speeds in the co by country. We're 30th. You know, about three years ago, we were in the high teens, 18 to 20 from that perspective. And so we have slid quite a bit. I mean, we're behind, you know, I don't want to pinpoint, I mean, but we're behind some of these countries like Greece that are just really struggling with their economy. And from uh, the download speeds, um, we can't, we're not competing. And so, um, you know, this, this is sort of the reality of the situation um, the other thing, oh, I guess I can't go backwards. There it goes. The other thing I would mention here is look at how fiber to the home pulls those numbers up significantly. So this is available speeds by technology. So this is um, what's available, the available average for each one. So it doesn't necessarily mean these are pe what people are ordering, but as advertised, what you could get um, should you sign, sign up for the maximum amount? That's the average. And so fiber to the home really pulls those numbers up. Now, why are we gonna do fiber to the home? So there's a few reasons, right? Um, and I'll, I'm gonna breeze through these slides. And this is why, uh, this is where I heard a lot of really good discussion in the morning sessions about this. Um, and the big thing with fiber is, is the bandwidth is really limitless. It's limited uh, by the electronics that you put on either end and how fast you can pump those signals through it. So in 30 years of deploying fiber, there's never come, become, there's never been another technology that's been developed to improve upon optical fiber. And so we know that it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be future proof. It's also the lowest maintenance cost. Uh, heard about some, some of that uh, earlier today as well. And, uh, and I'll get to this in a minute, but it's interesting that you can actually, there have been studies showing that the value of homes have increased um, based on having fiber to the home capability, up to $10,000 here. And that was by Tech Home Builder Magazine, that study. It improves the market value by nearly 9% in another study. And so you can argue with some of the data, but I think there's no doubt that people are willing to pay more if they have a home, if they're buying a home that's connected or has the ability to connect to a high-speed pipe. I always find this one interesting. I mean, some of the numbers that are going on with the new application are just ridiculous. Um, and these, these new applications, 
all are driving this insatiable demand for bandwidth. I mean, the one that really gets me here is Facebook would be the third largest country in the world um, if, we're, if it were a country. That's, how, that's the size. I mean, look at some of these numbers. Um, YouTube is consuming more bandwidth than the entire internet in, in 2000. And iTunes um, has uh, 10 million unique songs and sold over 10 billion songs. I mean, it's just, it's, some of these numbers are just outrageous. And so um, you can see where this demand is coming from. And it's also getting to be mainstream, right? Consumer Reports now ranks Fiber to the Home as the number one service. Um, w the Verizon service for Fiber to the Home is number one relative to all the other uh, providers that are out there providing DSL and, and other options. And then, of course, the TVs, right? The screen sets are getting larger, more HD um, televisions are in each home. And that's all driving this requirement for bandwidth. But I will say that I don't think anybody will get their city managers and city council to approve and the people to approve bonding of a fiber to the home network because their kids want to play games faster or better. Or they got more TVs, right? So there's got to be more to it, more to the discussion. And we, again, heard about some of this as well, telemedicine. At the council two years ago, we did a uh, we demonstrated um, telemedicine where folks were getting their blood pressure tested, and we had a medical professional on the other end of this telepresence um, doing some analysis on that work to kind of show that folks that live in rural communities and rural areas um, can get the same kind of benefits as living in a larger city, and just because folks live in more rural areas, they should have the same benefits of people that live, in, that choose to live in the cities and urban areas. Teleeducation, again, uh, it's been used and discussed a lot recently, but can you imagine having sort of this 3D HD view um, when, you're, when you're learning online? CO2 reduction is a big one, right? Fiber optics is green, it doesn't require power in the middle of the network. It's all passive from the central office all the way out to the customer premise. Public safety, productivity, right? If someone's, uh, if you have absenteeism, folks can work from home. Um, mothers with small children who at times may be kind of forced out of the workforce for a period of time can now work from home. And folks that are uh, disabled as well, that have challenging getting to an office can work from home. And so CSMG did this study in 2009 that estimated there could be up to savings of $15 billion nationwide by 2015 by leveraging fiber to the home, most of which is coming from reducing commuting, right, and CO2 emissions and gas and traffic. I mean, the, the advantages are just endless. And then there's the municipal advantages as well. Um, Chairman Janikowski said that even a modest increase in broadband adoption can yield hundreds of thousands of jobs across the nation. And so this, the, you're really starting to see kind of a groundswell in Washington to, uh, to kind of push the broadband plan out there. Emergency broadcast systems, amber alerts become more efficient. Now I'm going to start on smart grids because you all are a lot smarter than me. I heard a wonderful session this morning on smart grid as well. Intelligent transportation, so the DOTs are using it. Variable message signs, um, cameras for incident detection, um, and then public safety. And so it's really, it's about all those things kind of collectively making the argument and the pitch that fiber to the home makes sense. There's municipal advantages, there's the public good, the consumers want it, right? So now it's just about the business case. And fiber is a necessary public infrastructure. I think that's what our motto is. You know, last century it was the road system, the highway system, right? We believe that it's going to be the pipe to the home and communication in the 2000s. So just a couple of things. So first of all, how to deploy fiber to the home. I just got a few comments on this. Again, folks a lot smarter in the room than me. But 
You don't have to look very far to find the success story in Chattanooga. This came from the Times Free Press, basically talking about how the numbers for take rates have exceeded their expectations and the payback's gonna be much quicker than expected. And so that right there is, um, is kind of shows you the success story. And I think it was Will from City Wilson uh, talked about it earlier this morning saying, you know what, the biggest thing you can do is talk to others. And I totally agree with that. Talk to other municipalities that have done this. You know, talk to the city of, Wist, uh, of Wilson and Bristol and here in Chattanooga and Dalton. I mean, there are a lot of folks that have gone through this and can give you some really good input on that. Um, but the one thing, you know, just a couple of comments. So representing the constituents. The one thing in my experience of talking to different municipalities about fiber is that they don't normally go into it saying, hey, we want to make more money. We want to go and, and expand the scope of, of what we're doing as a, as a municipality. It's usually because they're doing it to protect their constituents. They're underserved, they're unserved. And there have been stories about towns that have basically gone to their incumbents and begged them and said, please give us the broadband that can make us successful and develop our economy. And just the, in, their, in their situation, the business case didn't make sense. And the municipality said, well, we're gonna do it ourselves. So of course, sometimes that's when they decide they're gonna do it too. But the fact of the matter is that it's about representing the constituents. And I definitely applaud those towns that are doing it um, and taking those steps. Municipal advantages. So the municipalities are, tr uh, are very trusted in the community and well maybe you know the real estate appraisal group or something notwithstanding within the municipality the the they are very trusted and folks want to believe in that and believe that, that the municipality provides a service that they're going to get what they need out of it understanding public engagement and having a local presence right how many times do you call your um, your provider and you're not even sure if they're in the US when you call them. Um, and so having that local presence, having an office where you can drive down the street and discuss, um, I think provides a lot of value. And then maybe other than talk, communicating with other municipalities, it's about finding that champion. Who's the champion that's gonna do it for your town or your city? Because all the cities and towns that have gone fiber to the home that I've talked to have had that one person or those two people that have really jumped on the, on the desk and said, this makes a lot of sense, and gotten the numbers and gotten the justification, done the marketing studies that says that the take rate's gonna make sense. You need to find that champion um, that's gonna do that in your town. And so really, just to sum it up, you know, fiber is the future. The bandwidth is just, is just endless, and we really know that it's gonna be here uh, forever. The municipalities, folks like yourself, are uniquely positioned to provide fiber to the home. And if you can't get someone to do it for you, you can't find a partnership, then do it yourself. And then I would just leave you with who's your champion? 